Hello everybody. Today I will little explore about the different uh, processing techniques for the uh, thermoplastics. So, we have already discussed uh, the basics of the um, thermoplastics and thermosets and what are the in principle what are the different uh, processing techniques associated with these two different kind of the uh, polymers. Uh, now, if we focus on the thermoplastics, so usually thermoplastics can be processed above the glass transition temperature when it becomes soft and we can pro, uh, pro, uh, provide the desired shape and size polymer component or other options also there. It means that we can melt the polymeric material and we start the manufacturing techniques or processing techniques from the uh, melting point itself. So, both options are there. So, uh, with that respect, we will try to discuss about the four different uh, techniques associated with the polymer uh, processing, so mainly the thermoplastics. One is the extrusion process, thermoforming, injection molding and fused deposition molding. So, of course, there are other techniques are also there available, but these are the mo uh, most widely used the uh, processing techniques which is associated with the uh, thermoplastics. So, once we discuss about the uh, different processing techniques of the thermoplastics, then we will try to understand the, the polymer processing, uh, for example, how to process the thermoset uh, plastics. Now, in thermoplastics, first we try to look into the processing of the extrusion process. So, extrusion process, I think, is it is well understood what is the extrusion process. So, but in terms of the uh, polymeric component, the extrusion is performed. So, it is basically that manufacturing products for a long component associated with the thermoplastics and that follow the constant cross section and this cross section is maintained as per the design of the die or I can say that this cross section is defined by the cross section of the die. So, such that through which the, the material is basically uh, forced through the die opening. So, uh, in that sense the through the die opening this uh, cross section of the component has been designed and the length can be controlled depending upon the this requirement. So, I mean to say that the same cross section over a wide range of the length can be produced using this extrusion process. So, in other sense we can say that since this product uh, design shape is actually maintained by the cross section of the die. So, in that sense we can consider this as a two dimensional product. So, other dimension we can depending upon the requirement we can make the different lengths. Uh, as per the you can by maintaining the uniform cross section throughout this thing. So, that is why usually this kind of the process is applicable for a we can produce about a long rod. So, cylindrical cross section over a long. So, that kind of the component is very uh, common to produce to process through the extrusion process uh, for the thermoplastics material. So, here you see that pressure is applied from the near to the workpiece and final product is actually taken out. Uh, from the die after the cooling operation. So, in uh, in this particular process the cooling phase is also important because uh, during the cooling phase we can see uh, that uh, some C polymer material is having very good elastic property. So, some kind of the elastic recovery might be there. So, that that can change or influence the shape of the size of the component. So, that is why the cooling process is very important associated with this, uh, this extrusion process. But in a one sentence we can say extrusion process is actually versatile process, but everything depends on the die. So, shape entirely depends on the die cross section and maybe what we can design the die. But depending on the product die has been of course, with the type of the product die can be designed as per the requirement of the uh, product, but it is definitely it generally it is called the very high volume production manufacturing process for the thermoplastics material. But at the same time if we if we looking for the continuous very large axisymmetry component over a long distance or so continuous process if we have to apply or we our product is requirement is like that uh, for a long uh, continuous where we want to produce it or uh, where having uniform cross section then this is one of the good options uh, for processing of the thermoplastic polymer. The most important process the apart from this thing the extrusion we understand now we will try to look into that uh, most important polymer processing is actually these two group of processing techniques one is the extrusion another is the injection molding. So, any anyway, we will discuss about the injection molding later on, but overall you can say the extrusion is the material intensive that means 
actually it is a type of the metal we are handling uh, it is more depends on this thing processing or choice of the processes depends on the material or other cases injection molding is actually labor intensive the skill and is some point of time is maybe important in case of the this uh, injection molding because injection modeling or molding uh, different steps we can follow. So, that is why uh, we see that overall we can see the this process whether extrusion and injection process in uh, there is a very minor differences are there between these two processes, but overall we can see both the process follow very common steps one is the heating and melting the polymer. So, first we heating and then melting of the polymer the first step, second step is that pumping the polymer to the shaping unit. So, there are the different way different mechanism we can pump this particular polymer after heating uh, to the shaping unit where we can uh, define the shape of the component through processing. Now, third step is the uh, forming the melt into the required shape and the dimension. So, we can take the forming means to take the desired shape and size uh, at this at the at the stage 3 the third step. Finally, once it is done then you have to follow cooling and solidification actually of course, plastic material is not exactly associated with the solidification process rather I can say that it is more better way to use the terminology curing. So, cooling and curing of the uh, this polymeric material is the final uh, stage. So, these are the four basic steps associated with the both the process. Now, if we focus on the polymer extrusion process here you can see that it is basically used for the shaping of the continuous length of the polymer products having the constant cross section as per the cross section of the die we have we can define one particular component. Now, once it is done we can make continuous process if necessary we can cut in between we can say multiple uh, size uh, components can be possible using this uh, this process. Now, the overall you can say that it involves this extrusion uh, polymer extrusion process is basically involving the melting first melting of the plastics then shaping it to the desired size uh, shape and then finally, it is cool and such that after cooling it becomes the hardened. So, that means we are hardening after hardening we will get the actual component. So, properties of the components depends on the cooling and the what we can do the hardening operation we are following uh, this process. So, using this process there is a wide range of the products can be produced, but mostly very production of the film thin film can be produced using sheet can be produced pipe can be produced and if you want to produce some specific profile also that is also produced using this thing, but all these cases it depends entirely on the, the design of the or cross section of the die. So, therefore, but if you look overall process of the uh, polymer extrusion process what are the different steps involved in the polymer extrusion process. So, steps means the what way the exactly process these techniques has been performed. So, first we look in the raw materials we are looking for the, the starts with the so first the feeding of the plastic materials the raw materials in terms of the pellets in the form of a granules sometimes in the form of a flakes or in the form of a powder. So, all the different form of the raw materials first we uh, collect it and that all we can put it dump in, in the hopper. So, from the hopper we put it and from the hopper it basically pass to the extrude mesh machine enter to the extrude machine and then in this cases when it is uh, enter to the extrude machines here we have the rotating cylindrical screw system is there. So, that is why when it is continuously rotating the screw system it actually pushes the plastic material to the desired position. Position means it is basically forward to the into the another forward to the within the barrel and therefore, so such that within the barrel so it can reach to the molten state. So, when it is reaching to the molten state then it supply to the passes passes through the die and after that uh, it uh, wants the after that we can follow the some kind of the cooling operation. So, now during this process it is very important to maintain the, the particular temperature. So, therefore, we use the thermostat to maintain the temperature of the of the barrel because we measure the temperature of the barrel and actually the the this temperature of the uh, polymer is uh, controlled by the through the controlling of the temperature of the barrel. So, because if you if there is a some overheating all this thing then it can decompose the properties will completely change. So, or it can degrade the plastic component. So, in this case the particular polymeric material it is also necessary to maintain the temperature during this process. Now, once it is melt then then plastics exist through the uh, extruder then it is passes through a particular shape of the die. 
So that di actually gives the uh, shape of the Dreiser cross section profile and this gives the, the uh, sec, uh, particular cross section for the uh, component. So once it is done then it will follow the cooling space. So one extruded plastic is cool, it is uh, basically cooling can be done either water or cooling can be done uh, yeah, depending upon the material we are utilizing this thing or this type of polymer we are utilizing here. So, and once it is done the cooling but uh, during the cooling phase it the cooling phase decide the hardening behavior this component and once it is hardened then it retain is the shape one particular shape and, and, and size also. So, now once it is done then extruder component are cutted into the pieces depending upon the requirement and the as per the length suitable for a particular component and after that we can uh, depending upon the applications also. This is the for basic steps associated with the extrusion of the polymeric material, but there are two things are also there. Uh, one is that screening screen pack is also attached to the extru this machines also because it is also necessary some kind of the to remove the uh, contamination in the molten plastic. For that purpose, uh, we use the you know, extruder uh, machines. So some kind of the uh, screening uh, technique. So here for we can use this one is, is the molten plastic leaves the cylindrical screw and then it is passes through the uh, the screen pack. So, such that the contaminated part will be removed when it is passes through the, uh, the screen pack. So, that is why screen pack is usually between the extruder screw and the die it is installed between the extruder at the uh, between the screw and the and the die the basically the screen pack is actually installed uh, in, in case of the uh, mesh in, in a particular extruder machine. Apart from this thing there is a breaker plate assembly. So, breaker plate assembly reinforces the screen and the simultaneously it will it will try to generate the back pressure such that once it is the uh, back pressure within the within the barrel. So, this breaker plate assembly is the helps to to some cut of uh, one particular component uh, uh, up to this thing up to uh, certain length of the uh, component. So, therefore, uniform melting and throughout mixing of the molten plastic in the barrel are actually uh, uh, this uh, facilitated by the back pressure. So, therefore, if is this what a the uh, breaker plate assembly creates the back pressure it will try to maintain the uniformly distrib um, uh, distribution of the molten material uh, molten plastic or the I think what are the plastic components inside the barrel that is one at the same time uniform melting also maintained with the application of the breaker plate. So, therefore, breaker plate and the screen pack both are also integral part of the any kind of the uh, extruder machine. Now, here you can see that structure of a single screw extrusion machines here you can see uh, this uh, single extrusion machine we see the looking into the component. So, some motor is attached with this thing. So, it is basically try to rotating the, this uh, screw inside there is a screw and of course, uh, threaded screw you can see that and hopper is there just to supply the, the raw materials uh, to the these uh, machines and you can see there is a heater also there and the outside to the barrel uh, the barrel over the barrel surface we can some external heaters is also there just to maintain the uniform the uh, create the temperature inside uh, the extruder um, this uh, the polymeric material to melt the polymeric metal and see this is screen pack is also there. Uh, through the screen pack. So, uh, at this end of the, the screw we can see at the end of this thing it is melt basically. So, once the melt um, polymer comes out through the screen pack and then it is passes through the die and of course, when it is passes through the die some external the, some internal pressure is created just to it pass through the die with a high pressure and the, it is come out from the die. So, you can see when it is come out through the die. So, the cross section definitely depends on the what is the cross section of the die. So, we have the control of the shape of the product only in the two dimensional form ok, but length we can it is a flexible. So, we do not have any control over the length shape. So, it is a uh, basically depending on the application or is a user uh, defined. So, that is why it is a sometimes it is called at the, the it this extrusion process create the two dimensional product. Now, see that uh, how it works uh, see the cylindrical screw of the extruder the it is rotates and it is uh, when it is rotating it creates try to create the sufficient pressure and such that this pressure will uh, helps to force the extruded material through a die. And die actually produces the products depend the desired geometry as per the cross section of the die. So, this is one part and but melt 
pressure that means when it is you see we are applying the heater is there we can control the temperature of the heater and we ensure this is a melting before leaving to the screen spec. So, melt pressure is mainly depends on the the screw rotational speed which is driven by the, the this uh, some particular uh, converters commanding voltage that means we can control this this rotational speed. Uh, in, in this particular case. So, melt depends on the what is the rotational speed we are following because if you try to understand what is the source of the heat uh, in this particular process there is a two different mechanism one is the shear heating generated, generated by the, the, the screw rotation. So, large amount of the shearing happens because this threaded screw is basically continue if you, there is a rotation of the threaded screw. So, one direction it will generate the, the pressure, but that is the because of the shearing action happens and that shearing is responsible for the generation of the heat. Apart from this thing, so therefore, conductive heat through the barrel uh, part, so heat will be conducted inside uh, with the application of the heater outside of the barrel. So, both the one is the, the heat comes from the heater side and another is the heat generated because of the shearing action of the polymeric material due to the rotation of the, so it is a one directional rotation of the the, the screw inside the barrel. So, therefore, of course, the barrel temperature is mainly controlled by the this outside heater also, but at the same time it is also important that uh, some significant amount of the heat generation is contributed by the shearing actions or I can say the screw revolution. So, therefore, we can say the screw revolution the rotational speed is also one important parameter associated with the uh, this particular process and that actually helps to estimate what is the total amount of the heat generation because of the shearing action happens inside the because of the rotation of the screw. Apart from this thing there is another important point in this process that sometimes we can use the additives also. Uh, so, some, some color additives can be used and sometimes the ultraviolet inhibitors can be used. Uh, so, that means to enhance the properties of this extruded uh, component, but that is uh, this all this additive has to be mixed in, in the hopper itself. So, before supplying the uh, inside the barrel, so we need to uh, mixing can happen inside the hopper. Now, uh, when it is if we look into the what way it is mixing this polymeric component, so it is having the the extrusion machine is the three different uh, steps, one is the feed, compression and metering, metering means that exactly the the flow rate we are maintaining. See this figure, we can see uh, this hopper is there and see that this certain part is basically the feed section. Feed section means what we are feeding the material to the to the system. And then it is basically this zone is basically mainly occurs the compression, compression or uh, of the compression section that means compression of the, the polymeric metal is usually happened this part and the metering section here the metering section is mainly the it is in the molten stage and you can control the what is the amount of the um, it is passes through the die. So, that part is basically a metering zone. So, these are the three basic zones associated with the this uh, the flow of the, the polymeric material inside the, uh, the screw or inside the barrel. Now, if you go in details this three different steps. So, therefore, feed section is basically is the uh, the feed section we can see that conveys the polymer from the polymer pellets it is and that is comes from the hopper and to the subsequent section. So, in this cases in the main uh, part work happens in this particular section is the basically preheating of the polymer not complete heating or not directly melting happens in the this this particular zone only the preheating happen. So, basically is certain temperature of the polymeric material. So, in this case heat screw depth is basically remains as a constant in this particular zone and he can see that this part is the basically solid zone it is a some uh, solid polymer initial part and then middle part it is basically this is a transition zone and partially melting and uh, in this part is the partially melting and this part is the polymer completely melts and metering zone is basically we just uh, control uh, the what is the amount of the liquid polymer is goes through the uh, die opening. Now, this part is the feed end and this part is the die end. So, these are the steps associated with this thing, but feed section we see that screw depth is constant just to uh, maintain the flow of this uh, require flow of the polymeric metal to the next section. Then in the compression section the compression of the uh, liquid metal happens. So, mass maximum shearing action heat generation because of the shearing is usually occurs in this particular zone, but here also screw depth 
can vary in the screw depth is actually increases here you can see the screw depth is actually increases so it is basically taking to the from the uh, partially or maybe preheated uh, polymer and reach starting from the one part to reach to the the completely melting of the uh, polymer so therefore here the viscous shearing is uh, is responsible for the uh, in this particular zone for the heating along with the external heating by the heater which is we, we, we can see that we apply the external heater from there also. So, heat usually occurs uh, the heating usually occurs in this part uh, in this particular zone. Now, of course, this particular zone the heating usually occurs. So, we say that in compression even also compression of the uh, plastic components occurs the thermoplastic occurs in this zone. So, definitely uh, in this case the density changes will be there. So, there might be some change in the density, but it will be accommodated by gradual changing from the preheating stage to the up to the melting point in this in this particular zone. So, that is why it is subjected to some density changes and and it is density changes which is accommodated, but it is accommodated gradually. So, apart from this thing then metering in this can in this particular zone is just to control the liquid metal. So, it is a very screw depth is constant in this particular zone and it is basically uh, uniformity brings the uniformity melt and the in, in the so uniform melting occur and the or I can say that uniformity in melting uh, in this particular zone it occurs and then supply of the melting metal to the next zone die opening. Now, if you look into this thing extrusion process, but there is a different variant of the extrusion process I can say that we can say the types of the extrusion process which is dealing with the thermoplastics. One is the blown film extrusion, then sheet and film extrusion process, co extrusion, over jacketing extrusion, tubing extrusion, twin screw extrusion. So, these are the different processes is there probably it is the I can say that uh, this variant of the extrusion process with the additional steps we can we can add this process to get the final product more easily. So, for example, the blown film extrusion. So, bl blown film extrusion means it extrusion process in principle it is falling, but at the same time there is a blowing action of this uh, extruded component occurs such that we can directly reach to the uh, finished component by with the addition of the one one steps here. So, used to fabricate the very film products. So, very thin film products if you want to produce. So, we can follow this this particular technique. So, here what is the this is the extrusion die shaped as a circle. So, extrusion die is a die shape is as a circle and the at the same time the we try to apply the air blowing of the extruded part. So, that such that air blowing means it creates the air pressure used to further expand uh, this film. So, uh, once it is expand this thing finally, the thickness is controlled by the nip rolls. Here you can see the nip rolls. So, the, that uh, molten plastic upward the die we can put it and nip rolls is control the, the thickness of the uh, film. So, we can see the this blown, uh, blown film extrusion process. We started with the simple extrusion process here and then uh, molten plastic passes through the die is the die cross section area is the uh, the circular cross section area. Then air uh, blown from the die so air pressure is applied. So, after with the application of the air pressure it is basically blown uh, into this uh, uh, this uh, the particular shape it is blowing in the particular shape. Now, just tube uh, collapsing frame so we can see some guided is there. So, should not collapse uh, of this particular tube and then after then we apply the nip roll. So, the nip rolls is basically here just, just to control the thickness of the uh, this film. So, apart from this thing nip roll can do this thing and even we can do further steps also rolling operation such that edge trimming and all these things we can perform and we can finally, we can wind up uh, in a uh, thin film with, with the particular roller. So, these are the steps. So, here you can see the blowing steps is the extra additional step attached with the uh, extrusion process. So, such that we can produce the very thin film associated with this for the polymeric material. Now, you can follow the sheet or film extrusion also. This is the other way along with the extrusion process we can we can put the additional steps here. So, sheet extrusion consists of the pushing molten polymer through a flat die. In this cases we can pass through the uh, molten polymer through a uh, flat die or the we can say the, the die is very slitting uh, part is there. The slit die we can follow here such that we can create the continuous sheet 
uh, with the even thickness. So, that means we can uh, create the continuous sheet and we can maintain the uh, thickness depending upon the slit die design at this particular uh, process. So, cooling rolls are used to determine. So, basically this particular roll are used to determine the thickness of the sheet and of course, we can bring some if you want to bring some surface texture also we can design uh, here also we can modify this process here uh, to in incorporate any kind of the uh, surface texture. So, here you see the sheet extrusion is used various applications we can see that, but before going to the application I, if it is better if you look into this figure also. So, same process the motor is there hopper is there the raw materials is added here or oh, twin screw you can utilize here by rotating the screw we can create uh, here also some extruded component, but at there is additional motor is there just to produce the single screw and it is passes through the pressure is created just it will passes through the slit die. So, slit die design of the slit die thickness it defi defines the thickness of the, the extruded component and then when it is come out we follow the, the different rolling part to incorporate the further reduction of the thickness or we can any surface texture is possible to uh, incorporate we can use it and then of course, a machine direction draw uh, finally, we can draw it and then uh, in the one system we can rolling in a in a roll in the form of a sheet. So, this is the another way to produce the polymeric sheet uh, following the sheet or film extrusion process here of course, in this cases we use the twin screw sheet extrusion line twin screw because this twin screw we can use it here sheet extrusion line probably twin screw we can utilizing here. So, we can the large uh, amount or maybe production rate can be very high or uh, maybe thickness or the width or what can be much more. So, this uh, using this particular process. So, in this process the application we can see the various packaging industry automotive components construction materials we can produce using this sheet or film extrusion uh, process or of course, here the thickness can vary wide range the thickness of the sheet can be vary from 0 0.2 to 15 millimeter range it can be possible to vary following this particular process. Now, there is another variant that is called the co extrusion process. So, this is another variant of the extrusion process to handle the polymeric material. So, co extrusion process is basically making two or more distinct plastic layer if we want to make that two or more distinct plastic layer then we can follow the co extrusion process. So, he in this case we see that uh, separate extrusions you got for each type of the distinct material in the co extrusion process for example, the polymer 1, polymer 2 and polymer 3 we want to uh, consider the simultaneously we can use the more distinct three different types of the polymer. Uh, making more distinct plastic layer if you want to produce it we can use the th three different sources separate extruders we can use and here co extrusion die. So, that is basically merging this three and use uh, it it produce particular thickness or it can merging this three types of the different uh, layer it is, is merging here. So, finally, we can use the uh, substrate uh, roll stock and substrate roll stock means we can use the other layer also here externally and finally, we can give the finished laminated uh, master roll or the uh, which is called the seated product that means, so we can see the laminated component we can produce which is having more than two or more distinct plastic materials are required in this cases we can follow the co extrusion process. Now, in this case we can use the twin screw extrusion process we have uh, we, we can see that some point of time we utilize the twin screw extrusion process. So, here twin screw extrusion process another process where involves use of the two intermeshing screw. We can use the two intermeshing screw within a barrel to convey melting, mixing and the pressurize the polymer. So, instead of the one uh, screw we can use the twin screw in some cases. So, the advantage of using the twin screw is that that is the mixing capability is will be good enough in this case is twin screw it gives a greater flexibility in processing for the various types of the polymers. So, and of course, precise controlling will be much more easier in this cases as compared to the single screw extru extrusion process. So, we are telling that single screw extrusion process uh, this uh, in this cases the as compared to the single screw extrusion process 
the twin screw helps to mixing more readily and easily and at the same time the control of the polymeric uh, the supply to the next zone is possible to control in the better way in case of the uh, twin screw extrusion process. So, here is the advantage of the twin screw extrusion process as compared to the single screw extrusion process. So, these are all different types of the extrusion uh, process I have just had to explain which is mainly applicable for the thermoplastic polymer and we can understand that uh, there is a huge application of the uh, this thermoplastic polymer which usually follow this particular uh, manufacturing technique. So, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention.